The word of the week this week is going to be heat affected zone or words of the week. Uh, it's commonly shortened to the has. Um, there's two processes that you'll get a heat affected zone. That's going to be your welding and your cutting uh, thermally. It's, it affects the edge of the well or the edge of the cut. So where your heat affected zone starts is right in the toe of the well or the edge of the cut inwardly, depending on the material, depends on how far your heat affected zone will go in there. This is an extremely important term that's used in welding. If you're in the welding industry and you know that, don't know what that is, you're going to want to make sure you know what the heat affected zone is. It's the weakest part of a weld. It's not actually part of the weld, it's on the side of the weld. But when you do a tinsel pull, the weld will not break. That's the strongest part of the actual weldment. The edge weld, the heat affected zone will break. Um, or it should anyways, otherwise you have a problem. Um, there's three factors that go into the heat affected zone. How much heat you put into it, the duration it's there, and how much area that the heat is applied to that will depend on how big the actual heat affected zone is too. It's also the material. Different materials will let heat dissipate better or let it travel through the material or keep it contained. Those are all factors that depend on what the heat affected zone is going to do. The, uh, the reason the heat affected zone is so important is because uh, microscopically you've got atoms moving around as you're welding or cutting. Now if you have uh, a lot of carbon in it or some alloying element that could cause problems, and it cools too quickly, like with carbon, we'll take carbon. If you have a high carbon steel and you weld it, the edge of that weld in that heat affected zone is going to cool too quickly. And what happens is you get a martensitic microstructure, which basically means it's hard. When you get hardness, you get brittleness. So if your heat affected zone isn't treated correctly with certain steels, you can have catastrophic failure. Now, we're going to look at the welding and the cutting here, and we're going to raise this up. What kind of welding uh, has a heat affected zone and is affected by this? All arc welding and most other welding processes. There is some cold processes, but they're still heating stuff up. There's cold welding or diffusion welding that uh, doesn't put a lot of heat into it. That's not affected as much. But for the most part, all welding processes have a heat affected zone. And they're very dangerous. The heat affected zone is, again, the weakest part of that whole weldment. So, um, cutting. Most cutting, when you're talking about the welding world, you're talking about uh, oxy fuel, plasma, laser, electron beam, all of those have a heat affected zone. People think lasers don't have a heat affected zone, they do. It's just very, very small. It's, it's a, a pretty efficient way to cut. But the two that don't, for sure, shearing it doesn't have a heat affected zone, and water jet doesn't have a heat affected zone. Uh, water jet is becoming more and more used. It's a stream of water that cuts material that is extremely efficient, has no heat affected zone, what we're talking about here today. So everybody wants a water jet, right? Yeah. Lasers, sorry, we're moving to water jets. Um, but those are the two cutting processes that don't have a heat affected zone. Even if you're talking like a bandsaw or um, even if you're talking mills and lathes, there's heat produced there when you're, when you're cutting that stuff. A lot of people have cutting fluids to, to ease up that uh, heat affected zone from those cuts, but it's still there. With a shear and a water jet, you have absolutely no heat affected zone. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to grab a bunch of welds that I have uh, on aluminum, stainless. Uh, I have a guy out there right now and he's polishing um, some low carbon steel. And if it's polished, you'll really be able to see the colors of the heat affected zone. So he's welding that up. We'll film that and show you that. I also have some tensile poles that I just did where we ripped them apart uh, to do some welder certs. And you can see the weld. It remains fat, doesn't stretch for your percent elongation, and then the heat affected zone gets really narrow, stretches, and, and pops. It's the weakest point of that weldment. So um, we'll go out in the lab and film those uh, weldments so you can kind of see the differences or the differences between materials and uh, what their heat affected zones look like. This is one of two tinsel poles we just did, and you can see the weld is located right here. You can see the weld is a little bit darker and it fractured right here in the heat affected zone. That's tinsel pull, the first tinsel pull we did. Now we'll show you the second here. This is the second tinsel pull we did. It's a little bit harder to see where the weld is on this one but it's right there and you can see it's the fattest part here and the elongated part here that stretched and again off to the side here, it failed again in the heat affected zone. 
So those are both two acceptable tinsel poles. Now we'll look at some welds. So we dug an aluminum lap joint out of the scrap bin there. And the heat affected zone is really easy to see on aluminum because it burns the oxide layer in it. That's what that white chalky residue is on the sides of the welds. So that's really easy to see where the heat affected zone is on, on aluminum. I got a stainless T joint I found here we'll look at now. Alright, this is a stainless T joint. And you can see right down here on the toe. It's turned a little, I don't know, what is that, purple? That's the heat affected zone, bluish, purplish. Stays really close and stainless. Usually it's cause for uh, distortion problems. So what we'll look at now is a uh, carbon steel um, groove joint that I had somebody weld here just a few minutes ago. This is a low carbon steel plate we just welded. Kind of polish it up so you can see uh, uh, usually along the heat effect zone it makes pretty little colors there. You can see right through here, that's your heat effect zone in here. Pretty easy to tell if it's shiny. If it's got a lot of mill scale on it, it's tough to tell, but that's nice and shiny and you can see that's where the heat effect zone is on this low carbon steel plate. What we'll do now is we'll look at a couple cuts. I got a plasma cut. I got an oxy fuel cut that's so that you can see it pretty good on. So we'll take a look at that. This isn't a well. It's actually an oxy fuel cut. We did it on a track burner here, and you can see right along this edge, there's a more narrow heat affected zone than it is with a well, but it's still there. And even narrow would be a plasma cut. I got a plasma cut we're to look at here for our last look at the heat affected zone. This is a part we cut out of the plasma cutter. It's got the, probably the most narrow heat affected zone out of everything we showed you. So I'm going to try and zoom right in, down in on the edge of this so you can see a little bit better. Alright, this is the edge of that uh, plasma cut. It's as close as I can get without it getting blurry. But you can see it's got a little discoloration there and a smaller heat affected zone. So that's all I got for this week. I think it's the last day of March. Right? There's it, April. 31st. Yep, so we're going to be going into April here. So until next time, thanks for watching and subscribing to TV Weld.